Hi, this is Daniel with Unrivaled Investing. This is a no-hype, mission-focused channel to try to find you exceptional companies and unrivaled investments. Today, we are talking about FUTU, or F-U-T-U stock, which has had an incredible run this past year. Let's dive right in. Here's a quick disclaimer. You can read it on your own, in your own time. So first, as you can see from the stock price, it has been an incredible year for Futu, where it's up 15x in the past year alone. Now, why? Why is it up? It's a combination of valuation expansion and hyper earnings growth. So here's the chart of their valuation expansion, where you can see it went from a low single digit price to sales multiple to nearly 20 times or over 20 times price to sales multiple. But their fundamentals were also phenomenal. In 2020, their 20 in 2020, they put up amazing hyper growth figures with revenue up over 200%. Profit was up 11x in the fourth quarter 2020 alone. So this is a real company with real profits. Management is also forecasting continued hyper growth in 2021 with 700,000 new paying clients based on year to date growth trends. This growth would present about 135% year over year growth in paying clients. Okay, so let's take a step back and try to understand, well, what is Futu? So they're an online trading platform that started off focusing on Chinese nationals looking to invest abroad, primarily in US stocks, as well as stocks in Hong Kong. They have some prominent apps like Futu Bowl for their Chinese nationals and Hong Kong uh, citizens, as well as the Moomoo app as they expand internationally, targeting international citizens. Now, what is the business model? The business model is primarily a commission-based model based on transactional volume. In 2020, about 60% of their revenue was from commissions and handling charges, about 30% from interest income, think margin loans, and about 10% from other income. Now, this, this is from like IPO allotments and currency conversion. So the vast majority of the revenue is transactional based. The other part is effectively based on margin loans. So how eager folks are to speculate in stocks and borrow funds. So that's the interest income. And this is the, the brokerage charges for, for trading. So as activity picks up, you're going to have a, a greater uptick in brokerage commissions. So while paying clients were up 160% year over year in 2020, their revenue actually grew much faster because of increased trading activity. Total trading volume was up nearly 300% in 2020 to 3.5 billion Hong Kong dollars. And so you can see these figures here. Now, is this, you know, it's great to see the, all these figures, but is this a legitimate company? It seems like it. Futu was founded by Li Hu Li, who was one of the early employees at Tencent, one of the Chinese tech powerhouses. That's Tencent. Tencent owns WeChat, which is one of the super apps in China with over 1 billion daily users. Tencent remains a major shareholder, and Sequoia Capital was also one of the early backers in Futu. So it's important to understand that it historically had these two kingmakers in their corner. These two companies are powerhouses in China, and they, I would argue, I use the, I use the phrase kingmakers to suggest they can help make or break some of these companies. For example, with Tencent, just imagine how valuable it is to have ownership in a company that has over $1 billion daily users. It's important to call out that they're also taking share. For example, I've did a video on Up Fintech or Tiger Holdings. Um, they only posted 136% revenue growth. Now look, 136% revenue growth is still quite attractive, but it is significantly less than what we're seeing here with Futu. And also another key component is here it is, it's off of a much smaller revenue base. So it's a lower revenue growth off of a lower revenue base. So they're, they're, Futu is beating Tiger on both size and growth rates. Management has also called out, so this is Futu's management, has also called out that they're taking trading volume share or market share in Hong Kong, so the Hong Kong trading. About 60% of their trading, actually more than that, is US securities, but they also trade securities in Hong Kong. Those securities, they represent about 2.6% of the market of, of all trading volume for Hong Kong securities. And that figure more than doubled year over year. So this, these are critical data points as we try to figure out is this an unrivaled investment? Because whenever we're looking at unrivaled investments or trying to find out if a company is unrivaled, 
The reason why this is so important is if you're unrivaled, you have the potential to win and take share for longer periods of time. So either way, what Futu is doing clearly is winning and beating back the competition as they're growing faster than Tiger and they're taking share in Hong Kong. So what are management's ambitions or goals for the years ahead? They're looking at international expansion, continued hyper growth, now not only targeting the Chinese nationals and Hong Kong citizens, but also looking at Singapore and the United States. The next component is building out their Nui Nui social community through posts and live streaming, trying to create a much more detailed, in-depth ecosystem for traders to go into and where they, they don't need to go into any other platforms to do trading. It's all here with Futus and their social community. Next up is, is their, their effectively their wealth management platform, which is Futu Money Plus, where investors on their platform can choose from different products like money markets, fixed income, and equity investments. For a lot of Chinese investors, they're trying to figure out ways to get a reasonable interest rate on their money. So having money market products is always in high demand. Now, what are some of my reservations? Now, I obviously have a few, and obviously you need to go to the SEC and see Futu's filings for the full set of risks, but my biggest reservation is that China has strict capital control policies in place. That means they limit the amount of money Chinese nationals can send abroad. These policies are in place so that China has strict control over their currency and interest rates for their general economy. The way to understand this is by limiting the amount of money that stays in the economy and can exit. So by limiting the amount of money that can exit the economy, it impacts how their, their ability to control interest rates. For countries that don't have currency controls, they will end up having to raise rates to draw capital to go back into their economy. If you have currency controls, it's you can control the interest rates and you can more easily control your interest rates. And if you're able to control your interest rates, it's easier for you to sort of hijack what speed you want the economy to go at. So China currently has a $50,000 US dollar limit for how much Chinese citizens can remit across borders. And this $50,000 limit is primarily you know, penciled out for tourism and education, not stock speculation. So if you're a Chinese national and you want to invest, let's say in US stocks, it's pretty tricky unless you already have capital outside of China that you've set aside. And keep in mind, this $50,000 limit is primarily for purposes not involving stock speculation. So there's a real risk that you wake up one day and find out the Chinese Communist Party or the CCP is investigating Futu because the capital they're accepting from their Chinese nationals was unlawfully obtained. In which case you could, you know, potentially wake up and find out that the Chinese Communist Party is limiting access of the Futu app to all their Chinese national citizens. That would be a huge impact on the business and a really rude awakening. But there's also the possibility that as China takes the global center stage, you know, as, as sort of they've, let's say, handled COVID significantly better than the United States and they're in a better financial position, theoretically, that they can take a greater share of global, you know, global currency, global transactions. And so as they take a global stage, it's possible that currency controls are loosened. And you've seen that suggested even in the uh, Chinese mouthpiece newspaper suggesting that there might be capital control easings in the future. Now, if that happens, I would expect Futu and potentially Tiger as well to do exceptionally well because that means even more capital can go into foreign exchanges, more capital, more exchanges, more trades, Futu's revenue goes up. So what are my thoughts on the valuation for Futu? So here's my hypothetical valuation framework based on their recent results. This is part of my value proposition to you. So please make a point of subscribing to this channel as you can click on the description of this video and click file download and play around with the assumptions yourself. The valuation itself is pretty interesting. Of course, the stock price can go way above or way below what I'm penciling out. This is only a hypothetical framework. Um, and obviously their fundamentals can be way different from what I'm penciling out here, but I'm trying to work from a logical basis when I'm considering my investments. Let's go through a few different assumptions. So one of which is next year's growth, I'm penciling out 120% to 160% on the low to high side. This is based on management's guidance of new paying customers of 135%. Their guidance of 135% growth was based on year-to-date growth so far in 2021. This seems possible. What about the optimized margins? 
that, that we're penciling out here. This is supposed to be an operating profit figure pre-tax. In 2020, their operating profit was over 40%. In the fourth quarter, it was closer to 50%. So based on, let's say, a gross margin of nearly 80%, I'm penciling out 40 to 50%, which based on recent results and just logic, you know, 80% gross margin, assuming some, some costs in terms of reinvestment, 40 to 50% definitely seems possible and reasonable for the longer term. The next big component is the outlook for the ensuing four years after 2021, as I like to take a multi-year time frame. I'm a long-term investor whenever I consider an investment, and here it is, I'm taking a five-year time frame when I'm considering investing. So what does their annualized revenue growth look like? That's the big question. What does their annualized revenue growth look like? Can it be much higher than this? And a lot of people would say, well, wait a second, it's growing at 200% this past year. Shouldn't you be penciling out a higher figure? That's why I create this sheet for you to play around with. This is tougher to forecast as a lot depends on the eagerness and ability of Chinese citizens to invest in U.S. stocks. As I mentioned earlier, Fudu's growth is driven not only by users, but largely driven by trading activity as well. For example, in 2021, in 2020, the user growth was, was sort of shadowed by the fact that their trading activity was significantly more. This growth range will have a huge impact on the ending multiple as well, because if you grow at a higher rate, generally you get a higher end multiple but all in pointing to a reasonable downside. Here it is, I'm pointing to about negative 30, let's say negative 40% downside and pretty attractive upside as well, a couple hundred percent upside as well. So now this this strikes me as a reasonable and interesting risk reward, you know, a couple hundred percent upside. And one could argue my multiples, maybe you should make this higher, maybe you can make this higher. Um, and, and reasonable downside given these assumptions. Here it is, I'm assuming n multiples of 15 to 30 times five years out. Now this also assumes that they don't blow up or one day the CCP effectively shuts down their Chinese citizen access. To know what I'm going to do, go to unrivaledinvesting.com, click on journey, where I'll make an exclusive video just focused on Futu and my additional exclusive thoughts, because there's only so much you can put in a YouTube video to keep your audience's attention. If you go to unrivaledinvesting.com, you can also see my personal journey. It's an exclusive journey showing what I'm doing each month, as well as what are the potential multi-baggers that I'm trying to find each month, as the reality is just finding one potential multi-bagger can change your life journey. So if you're interested in following my journey as I try to find these potential multi-baggers, go to unrivaledinvesting.com. Dot com. And if you enjoyed this video, particularly this new video framework that I did, regular viewers will know this is slightly different than in the past, please leave a comment below. Uh, I'd love to hear your feedback on, on this video format. And uh, if you're not a subscriber, please make a point of subscribing. Thanks so much for watching.